Hi, my name is Amy Heisey, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw St. Ignatius of Loyola. I'm going to show you how to draw him using simple lines and simple shapes. We celebrate his feast day on July 31st, and for today's project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to start with St. Ignatius's head. For his shape, I kind of have like an oval or an egg-like shape. It's a little bit more um, curved and wider up at the top, and his chin is slightly more narrow down at the bottom. You, of course, can do your head any shape that you would like. So close to the top of my paper, I'm going to start off with the top of his head. So I'm just making it slightly wider here at the top. And as I get down for where I want his chin to be, I'm just going to narrow that shape just a little bit, kind of like this. And the nice thing about working with pencil is if we need to make any adjustments, it's very easy to change a line and erase. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the collar of um, this robe that he has. So underneath his chin, we're going to draw the letter V. So it's going to be about the same width as his um, as the bottom of the head. So I'm doing one diagonal line that comes in like that and another one that comes up and connects to his chin like so. There's also these two triangles here, one on each side. So wherever your triangles kind of connect to the head up at the top, I'm gonna to do one line that comes down on the left side, one line that comes down on the right side. So that's creating the top part of this white collar. And then it's gonna connect down at this bottom point of that V shape that we drew in earlier. Next, we're gonna put in this book that he has open. You often see him holding books or something that he's writing on in his artwork and his sculptures. So we're gonna start off by putting in this left side here. So right where his collar is, I'm going to do a diagonal line that comes down ever so slightly angled towards the left like this. And you just make the line as long as you want that book to be. So you can make it tall or short. And we're gonna do two diagonal lines that are sloped downwards towards the right to create these side edges. So I'm gonna do one here and one going the same direction here. I'm going to add a line that connects these together and that's going to create the center part of the book. And we're gonna do this right side here. So we're kind of doing the opposite. This one is angled upwards towards the left. So we're gonna do one line that comes up towards the left here, and one line that comes up towards the left down at the bottom. And we wanna make sure that they're about the same width as the page that we have over on that left side. So if you need to make any adjustments, feel free to change your lines and use your eraser however you need. We're gonna put in his hands. So we have this hand that's holding the book open. So it's curved kind of like a letter C where the fingers are. And then this part here where it's kind of wrapped behind the book, that's kind of curved um, like a parenthesis shape. So I'm gonna start with the long fingers. So I'm going to do a curve like this, kind of reminds me of a letter C, just a little bit wider. And that's creating the length of these tall fingers that are in front of the page. But I'm gonna do another curve, kind of starting um, at this edge, but for, at the top, I'm gonna to go just a little bit higher like this. That way it looks like this part here is maybe like a thumb that's kind of wrapped behind. And to make that look more like fingers, I'm going to add one, two, three straight across lines here. And that's gonna make it look like that lobby shape is now four tall fingers. I'm going to add a slight curve here. There's a little bit of space showing that collar peeking out. So I'm gonna leave a little gap here and I'm going to curve towards where that hand is and kind of stop when I hit the book. 
we're going to do a curved line for this shoulder. So it's ever so slightly curved, think kind of like a frown. So we're going to start a little bit underneath that part of the collar and we're going to move our line in a slight curve towards the left and that's creating this top part of his cloak and I'm going to add a line from this edge to that bottom point of his collar and that makes it look like this cloak is kind of on his shoulder but is starting to tuck behind. We're going to put in his torso next. So we have this straight up and down line here and it kind of comes across and connects to his book. So kind of somewhere in between this corner of the book and this corner of his robe, somewhere kind of near the middle, you're going to do a line that's up and down like this. And you just have that line come down as far as you want his waist to go before curving it across like a smile line and I'm stopping mine at my book. Now, depending on how big or small your torso is, it might come under his book or it might stop um, before you reach his book. You can make any adjustments to your drawing as needed. We're gonna start to put in these lines here for the sides of his robe. So I'm going to do a line that comes down at an ever so slight angle off towards the left. I just draw that line down for as wide and tall as I want this part of his robe to be. And I'm going to add a similar line over on the right side. So kind of where his book is, so where I'm going to put this other line. So it's going to come down and it's going to be slightly angled more towards the right. And it's going to be the same length on each side. And sometimes after I draw a line, I notice things that I want to adjust and change. So if you're like me and you want to make a small adjustment to make his clothing wider, if it was too narrow, or slimming it in. If you feel like it was too wide, we can do that. So down at the bottom, we want to connect his robe with a curved line like a smile. So it's higher up at the edges, a little bit lower at the middle. So I'm going to add my curved line here. And that also makes it look like the fabric is more rounded and flowing down at the bottom. And I want to add a similar curve line up here to create this part of like a belt or like fabric that's wrapped around at his waist. At the very bottom, we can see just a hint of his toes from his shoes sticking out. So I'm going to put one curved line for this foot that we see over here on this left side of the drawing. And we're gonna do a curved line here for this right side. So it looks like his toes are kind of angled towards the corners of the paper. And they have a little gap in between each foot. We're gonna finish up this arm. So we have this straight diagonal line here, starting at this part of his cloak. So I'm going to do a diagonal line like this, and that's creating this bend in his arm. I'm going to do a slight curve for the wrist like this. So it's like a little smile. And I wanna do a diagonal line that matches this one here on this edge, but it's gonna be a little bit longer. So it's gonna come down and it's gonna be longer than this one right here. Then I want that to come up and connect to his torso. So it's going to curve up like this connecting to the body. So it's kind of like a big V or like a big check mark. We're going to add another curved line like a smile here. And that is separating this black part of his clothing with this white cuff 
that's sticking out from under the sleeve. And his hand is the shape of a mitten. We have a big curve for the big fingers and a smaller curve for the smaller fingers. So I'm gonna start with that big curve first. So it's gonna be on this left edge. So it's gonna curve up, kind of like a big frown or a kind of like horseshoe kind of line. And I'm gonna do this smaller curve here and that creates the overall shape of his hand. Now, if I leave it like that, it is gonna look like a mitten, but I wanna add these long lines kind of here on these tall fingers. So if I add one, two, three up and down lines, that looks like the tall fingers of this hand. We're gonna finish off with his cloak. So over here on this side, this comes down in a curve, kind of like the letter J. So it's long where it starts at his hand. And then when you get down at the bottom, it kind of curves like the letter J. And I'm gonna have it connect to his clothing right about there. We're going to add a diagonal line here, kind of near where the arm is bending, about here. And I'm going to move my pencil at an angle like this. And that is gonna create this point of his cloak. And it's, um, the fabric is kind of folded. So we're gonna do a big curve, kind of like the back part of the letter D. So I'm gonna start here and I'm going to act like I'm writing out the letter D, but instead of um, connecting these lines, I'm gonna stop like that. So it's kind of like this nice curve. I want this curve to come and connect to the bottom of his clothing. So I'm going to have it come down like this. And I'm having it connect kind of like at a similar spot to this edge. That way they look like it's the same length. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna do this edge right here. So I'm going to add a line that comes straight up and stops here. This looks like the fabric of the cloak or cape that is kind of folded and behind. And we want to add one more up and down line here to create this part of his cloak. So on this curved edge, I'm just going to do a diagonal line that comes up and mine ends up about where the elbow is, but depending on how big a curve you did on your cloak, yours might be in a different spot. And it's okay if yours looks different than mine. We are going to um, work on his head next. So we can see this ear sticking off the right side. So I'm going to do a slight curve like this, and that's creating the shape of the ear. And I have this little curve going the opposite way to create kind of like a ridge of his ear. Next, we're gonna be putting in his eyes. So his eyes are around the center of his head and I just did two simple circles. You of course can make any changes that you wish on yours. So I'm gonna put one little circle here and one little circle here, leaving a gap in between. And that creates the shape of his eyes. His nose is kind of angular. In between his eyes, I'm going to do a line that comes straight up and down like this, but I'm stopping about halfway between his chin and his eyes. And I'm going to add a line that comes this way towards the right. So it looks like the letter L, kind of like Loyola. I'm going to add a hint of a nostril here. It's just a slightly curved line. Think kind of like a parenthesis. For his mouth, I have a straight line, but then it just slightly curves up over here. So in between his nose and his chin, that's where I'm gonna put my mouth. So it starts off straight, but he has just a little hint of a smile, kind of like a smirk here. His eyebrows are also kind of straight-ish. So above his eyes, I'm gonna start off with a straight line like this to create the main length of his eyebrow. 
but on the left side, it's going to turn down, and on the right side, it turns down towards that ear. And his eyebrows are a little bit thick, so I'm going to do kind of the same thing above. I'm going to do a line that comes straight across and then down at a point. And I'm going to do the same thing on this left side, kind of go straight across and then kind of comes down. For his facial hair, we're going to do this curve, kind of like a frown, in between his nose and his mouth. So it's going to come across like this. And I'm going to do another line that's kind of similar. And that's going to create the thickness of this kind of mustache area. I'm going to do a curve kind of matching the shape of his chin, but right here in the middle, it kind of looks like a square or like a rectangle. So you're gonna do a line that comes up. It's gonna go over like you're drawing a square and down, and then it's gonna curve up and connect to that mustache line like that. Last but not least, we have a little bit of his facial hair that's kind of coming up towards his ear and it connects with his hairline. So I'm going to do a line kind of continuing this facial hair up past his ear. And I just want a little bit of hair kind of showing and it just kind of disappears the higher you get up the head. We're going to add some writing on his book. So we're gonna start over here, it's Latin. So you of course can write anything that you want to on his book, but he had this quote here that is common with his order. So my Latin pronunciation is really bad, but um, basically what this means is for the greater glory of God. So on the top line, I'm going to do A, D, and I'm trying to center it in this book. The next line is M, A, I, O, R, E, M. Then we have D, E, I, and G, L, O, R, I, a M. On this right side, we have this I H with a cross and S, and it's inside of a circle. So I'm going to draw that circle shape first. So because his hand is in the way, I'm not going to see the full circle, but I can get a, most of that circle put in there. And it has these rays around it. So I have some that are straight, so kind of in the middle at the top and the bottom and the middle on the side. I'm gonna put these straight up and down lines. And I'm also gonna put some like kind of in between here and here. So it kind of looks like a sun. Then I'm gonna put these squiggly lines, think kind of like the letter S, the way it waves in and out. And those are gonna be these rays. And if you can fit it, you can write the letters I, H, oh, and I can barely fit in that H. And if you can fit an S, you can. My hand's a little bit bigger in this example than in this example. And in the middle of the H, you can put a cross. And voila, unless there's any other details that you want to add to yours, like maybe you want to add in a halo, maybe you want to have his writing be a little bit different than what I showed you. Any changes that you want to make or any details that you want to add, go for it. Um, whenever you finish, you're going to work on coloring your artwork. And I'm going to be using markers because that's what shows well on camera. But when I use markers, I love to use black pens like this for outlining. You, of course, can use any art supplies that you wish. Thank you so much for drawing along with me. I would love to see how your drawings of St. Ignatius of Loyola turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media and know that here on my channel, I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials every week. Another way that you can help support my channel is through my Buy Me A Coffee page and art supply wish list. 
I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for drawing along with me and I'll see you in the next video.